This is the proposed Ben Gurion Canal, a $55 billion mega project that would cut straight across Israel and directly rival Egypt's Suez Canal. A 300 kilometer artificial waterway through the Negev Desert, potentially deeper, wider, and faster than Suez, and one that could completely rewrite the balance of power in the Middle East. If Israel actually builds this canal, it wouldn't just be an infrastructure project, it would be a geopolitical weapon. It would give Israel and its allies full control over one of the world's most critical shipping routes, bypassing Egypt entirely and threatening billions in annual revenue from the Suez. But here's where it gets even more controversial. The most direct and economically efficient path for this canal runs straight through Gaza. And that raises a very explosive question. Is this mega project just an economic dream? Or is it quietly one of the biggest strategic motivations behind decades of conflict in the region? Now that's a bold claim, so let's unpack it. At the heart of all this drama sits the Suez Canal, Egypt's golden artery of trade. This isn't just a waterway, it's a lifeline. Roughly 10% of all global trade, from oil tankers to container ships, passes through this narrow channel connecting the Mediterranean to the Red Sea. In short, if the Suez Canal sneezes, the global economy catches a cold. Egypt knows this. The Suez isn't just an engineering marvel, it's an economic powerhouse, bringing in nearly $9.4 billion a year. That's a huge deal for Egypt's economy, and it gives the country tremendous geopolitical leverage. However, Israel's plan to build a new canal, one that would directly rival the Suez, could change everything. Imagine this, another artificial waterway stretching nearly 300 kilometers across the Israeli desert, running parallel to the Suez Canal and connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Gulf of Aqaba, and ultimately, the Red Sea. That's longer, deeper, and more technologically advanced than Suez. And whoever controls this canal? They basically control one of the world's main arteries for oil, grain, and global shipping. It's not just a project, it's a geopolitical bombshell. Now you might be surprised to hear that the concept of an Israeli canal isn't new at all. As far back as the mid-1800s, engineers were already tossing around the idea of cutting a canal through what's now Israel, linking the Mediterranean and Red Seas. In 1955, a British naval officer named William Allen even suggested building a canal connecting the Red Sea, the Dead Sea, and the Mediterranean, arguing it could be cheaper and more strategic than the Suez. But back then, Egypt's Suez Canal was already on the rise, and Allen's idea was shelved. The concept re-emerged officially in 1994, when Israel publicly revealed plans for what it called the Ben-Gurion Canal, named after its first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion the man who dreamed of transforming the Negev Desert into a thriving economic hub. And then, in 2021, the idea suddenly popped back into the headlines again. Israel announced that construction of the canal could begin as early as that summer. Now, that didn't actually happen, at least not publicly. But the timing was interesting, right? Regional tensions were high, energy markets were unstable, and the world had just witnessed the Suez Canal getting blocked by a single ship, the Ever Given, creating one of the biggest maritime traffic jams in history. So you can imagine how a second canal, capable of handling ships in both directions, would sound like a pretty attractive backup plan. Here's what the plan looks like on paper. The Ben Gurion Canal would stretch about 293 kilometers. That's roughly one third longer than the Suez. It would cost around $55 billion to build and could bring in an estimated $6 billion a year in revenue for Israel. Unlike the Suez, which is mostly cut through sandy terrain, Israel's version would carve through rocky desert. That means fewer maintenance issues and possibly a more stable structure overall. It's also designed to be deeper and wider than Suez, about 50 meters deep and 200 meters wide, capable of handling the world's largest ships, some over 300 meters long. And to top it off, the plan includes building entire new urban zones along its banks, cities, hotels, entertainment centers, even nightclubs. Because hey, if you're going to cut a new artery through the desert, 
Might as well turn it into a tourist attraction too, right? But here's where things take a darker turn. When you look at a map of the proposed route, something jumps out immediately. The canal's most direct and economically efficient path cuts right through Gaza, one of the most politically sensitive and conflict-ridden regions on Earth. Coincidence? Maybe, but many analysts argue otherwise. See, if Israel could control Gaza, or at least pacify it, it would allow for a straighter, shorter canal route, saving billions in construction and operation costs. A detour around Gaza, on the other hand, would make the project much longer, more expensive, and far less practical. That's where the theories come in. Some believe that the renewed interest in this mega-project might not just be about trade, but about strategic control. Having direct access to a man-made waterway connecting the Mediterranean to the Red Sea would give Israel and its allies enormous leverage, not only over Egypt, but also over key global shipping lanes used by China, the U.S., and Gulf nations. Think about it. The U.S. military relies heavily on the Suez Canal for rapid deployment between the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean. If Israel built its own canal, fully under its control, that would give Washington an incredible strategic advantage. It could also undermine Egypt's monopoly on Red Sea traffic and significantly reduce Cairo's geopolitical influence. But there's more at stake than just money and power. Experts warn that this canal could completely reshape the balance of energy and trade in the region. It could threaten China's massive Belt and Road Initiative, which relies on stable trade routes through the Suez and surrounding seas. It could even impact choke points like the Strait of Hormuz, where roughly 30% of the world's energy supply passes every day. In other words, this isn't just about digging a canal. It's about redrawing the lines of global power. Now, building something on this scale isn't easy, even for a country as technologically advanced as Israel. We're talking about cutting a massive trench through one of the harshest environments on Earth. The Negev Desert isn't exactly a walk in the park. There's no natural waterway to expand, no flat terrain to follow, and the engineering challenges are enormous. Originally, some of the early blueprints actually suggested using hundreds of nuclear explosions to speed up excavation. Obviously, that idea is off the table now but it gives you an idea of just how extreme this proposal really is. Modern plans rely on more traditional methods, dredging, excavation, and hydraulic engineering on a monumental scale. Over 300,000 engineers and technicians would be needed, recruited from around the world, working nonstop for at least five years. Once complete, the canal would reportedly include advanced surveillance systems, laser-based ship tracking, weapon detection barriers, and underwater sensors capable of monitoring every vessel passing through. Think of it as a canal that doubles as a high-tech security corridor. And that's not all. Israel claims that its canal would be safer and more efficient than Suez. It would allow two-way traffic, meaning no more single-file convoys like in Egypt. It would also cut down on bottlenecks and drastically reduce the risk of another ever-given-style disaster. From a purely logistical perspective, it sounds genius. From a geopolitical perspective, it's complicated. Because while the canal could bring Israel billions in revenue and global prestige, it would likely devastate Egypt's economy. The Suez Canal is a cornerstone of Egypt's financial stability. It's what funds schools, hospitals, infrastructure, you name it. If Israel's canal siphons off even a fraction of that traffic, it could send shockwaves through the Egyptian economy. That's why the mere idea of this project sparks so much tension. For Egypt, it's an existential threat. For Israel, it's an opportunity to reshape the regional order. And caught right in the middle of all this? Gaza. Strategically, Gaza's location is perfect for a direct canal route. But politically and ethically, it's a nightmare. Any attempt to carve a waterway through or near Gaza would require total control over the territory, something that has fueled countless conflicts and geopolitical debates for decades. So when people say, is this canal one of the real reasons behind the ongoing conflict? Well, it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. Because when you look at the timing, the roots, and the stakes involved, the pieces start to form a pattern. Israel gains economic independence from Egypt, military leverage over the Red Sea, 
and a direct trade route connecting Europe to Asia, bypassing not only the Suez Canal, but also potentially even parts of China's trade network. Meanwhile, Egypt loses revenue, influence, and strategic importance. And if history has taught us anything, it's that massive infrastructure projects, especially ones that alter global trade, are never just about engineering. They're about power. But here's where it gets tricky. On one hand, this canal could revolutionize maritime logistics. It could create jobs, attract investment, and establish Israel as a global trade hub. On the other hand, it could trigger new conflicts, destabilize economies, and upset the fragile balance of peace in one of the most volatile regions in the world. So the big question is, is it worth it? Should humanity keep doubling down on these colossal megaprojects? Or should we start rethinking how we share and protect our most vital trade routes? That's the thing about ideas like this. They're never just about digging a ditch in the desert. They're about reshaping the world order. And as ambitious as it sounds, it's not impossible. Israel has proven time and again that it can pull off engineering miracles, from making the desert bloom to building some of the most advanced desalination plants on the planet. The Ben-Gurion Canal could very well be another chapter in that story. But at what cost? Would this canal be a symbol of progress or a flashpoint for yet another global conflict? Would it unite the region through trade or divide it even further? Those are the questions that make this story so fascinating and so unsettling. Because when you zoom out and look at the big picture, this isn't just about Israel and Egypt. It's about the global economy, the control of energy routes, and the constant tug of war between nations over who gets to steer the ship, literally. So, what do you think? Is Israel's proposed Ben-Gurion Canal a brilliant move toward the future of global trade or a dangerous gamble that could tip the balance of power and ignite new tensions across the Middle East? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really curious how you see this. Is this a legitimate infrastructure plan or is it part of something much bigger? Because trust me, this story, it's only just beginning.